the question is diagnostic modality used for assessing pathology of major salivary glands is okay first of all let's understand the major salivary glands basically secrete saliva and this saliva contains 90 percent water okay so basically it is something that has it the these basically these glands secrete something that contains a liquid medium and when you're going to be taking a specimen basically when you have to remove a specimen for such a uh, tissue which is secretes primarily a liquid medium you need to remember that saliva also contains desquamated epithelial scales okay so when the saliva is secreting the well, sorry when the gland secrete the saliva there are some amount of other of the desquamated epithelial cells which are actually secreted from the glands outside to the outer external exterior okay now amongst the four options that are given over here usually when you have a salivary gland pathology they say that the first and the most rather even for your thyroid glands the first and the most important di diagnosis or diagnostic method or aid that you will use in order to identify what is the problem that is happening with the salivary gland is actually FNAC that is also known as fine needle aspiration cytology. What exactly happens in FNAC is you take a needle which is somewhere around 30 gauge and you just insert the needle slowly you just apply topical local anesthesia you take this needle you slowly insert it into the area of concern that is in this case it would be the salivary glands let's say the parotid gland you will slowly insert the needle after inserting the needle you will just place it in the gland and you will keep it over there due to capillary action what will happen is whatever fluid is present within the salivary gland will actually start moving inwards into the needle as a result whatever uh, tissue specimen that is there with the desquamated epithelial cells or whatever tissue specimen like for example since you have penetrated a tissue some part of the tissue will also be present within the needle and in addition to that because of capillary action the fluid also will help in pushing the tissue backwards so this is what is fnac now what you do is you take this needle and you attach it to a syringe and you uh, push out all the contents onto a glass slide now based on what type of staining method you want to use you can use a stain and you can observe the entire thing under the microscope when you observe it under the microscope, you will notice what kind of pathology is probably or possibly seen or associated with that particular gland. Excisional biopsy is done primarily when the lesion is less than 1 or 2 centimeters in size. So what you do is you remove the entire tissue and you just send it for biopsy. Incisional is when it is greater than 2 centimeters in size, you take a small portion of the tissue and you send it for biopsy. Punch biopsy is basically what you do is let's say i have a big lesion and i want the entire lesion along with the sub epithelial connective tissue let's say that you are talking about squamous cell carcinoma of the lip and what you do is you want to know whether it has spread laterally or it has invaded the connective tissue and it is going to be spreading over there so what i do is i take a big bore needle somewhere around like a 12 gauge or something and i with a sharp prick i insert it directly into the area where the carcinoma is present and then I take out that tissue. So you get specific needles for performing punch biopsy. And this tissue, what happens is it gets inserted and bone into the needle and it comes out. So this is primarily done in order to get more amount of tissue, not only the surface tissue, but also the connective tissue and the subcutaneous tissue. All of it will come together, which will be present in one slide itself. Okay.